Uh, yeah, after the initial release, like that day, someone was like, hey, that's a funny name. That's a nice name. And I'm like, what do you mean? And and they're like, rest in peace, Grep, R.I.P. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, um, it was around the time that I started programming, um, I don't know, like 22 years ago or something like that. And I used to frequent this place called Coney Island and like not the amusement park Coney Island, but the hot dog stand in Worcester. Um, and it opened in 1918. So it's been there forever. It's like an institution. Um, and their hot dogs are delicious. And one of the things about that place is that you can like write little graffiti on the booths and it's like, it's not frowned upon. It's just all the booths are covered in like little bits of graffiti. And uh, one time I saw burnt sushi written on it and I was like, Hey, that's kind of like a fun oxymoron. So I just kind of ran with that and registered the domain. And that was that. <laughs> I started hacking on the PHP source code for a uh, forum software called uh, vBulletin. Um, back then, I don't know, it was probably like 2003 or 2002, 2004, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, vBulletin was, uh, it was not open source software. You had to pay for it. I think I, I did eventually end up buying a license for it. But I wanted to host a discussion forum on my uh, Simpsons fan website. It was evergreenterrace.net. <laughs> um, and I actually got more fascinated with how the forum software worked and just kind of hacking on the PHP code to make it do little things. And there are like little mods you could install and they didn't quite work the way I wanted them to work. So I would just kind of hack at it. And then I decided I wanted to write my own forum software uh, called WTCBB. And that was kind of like my big, my first big uh, software project. Um, it never really got caught on, but there was a small following. Uh, I think the thing that I like most about open source is just building something and creating it and, and donating it to the commons. And, uh, most of my code is I try to publish into the public domain, although that is fraught. So that's like kind of like this dual license thing with the MIT license and the unlicensed. Uh, but I like publishing code into the commons so that it's free for everyone to use. And I love watching people use uh, the stuff that I build. Um, I think that's what drives me for open source. <laughs> Uh, yeah, after the initial release, like that day, someone was like, hey, that's a funny name. That's a nice name. And I'm like, what do you mean? And and they're like, rest in peace, Grep, R.I.P. And I was like, oh, my God. For whatever reason, I didn't see that meaning of it. Because when I was, I was basically trying to come up with like short R words that meant fast. And like I came across rip, like to rip through something. And I had always used it lowercase. And I just didn't realize, I didn't see the rest in peace uh, interpretation. Um, and yeah, so a lot of people, like for a lot of people, rip grep might replace grep. Um, but it can never really replace grep because it's not POSIX. It never will be POSIX. And I don't want it to be handcuffed by POSIX. So it was never meant to like completely replace grep. But uh, so that wasn't my intent. But yeah, I, I'd say I laughed when I realized that. So the original reason that I wrote rip grep or started building a, 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 the concept of a command line tool that used the regex crate uh, that I've also uh, wrote and maintained 
Um, the original reason why I did that is I wanted to benchmark match overhead. So I wanted to say, like, if someone wanted to go out and write a grip, like, is the regex crate fast enough for that? Is there something that is impeding that? So like, if you're matching on every single line, I was worried about that for whatever reason. So it was basically like this very simple sort of like proof of concept benchmarking harness. And I did use that to guide some optimizations in the regex crate. Um, but then once I kind of like wrote it, it was like as fast as GNU grep or faster in some cases. And I was like, whoa, this is kind of cool. Um, and then I tried comparing it to the Silver Searcher, which um, is also very popular. And it did well on that metric as well. Like just this really basic sort of benchmarking harness. It had, didn't even have the name Rip Grep yet. Um, and since it did so well, it's like, hey, I could just like build this out and just build something that is, you know, better than GNU Grep and better than the Silver Searcher all in one tool. When I published RipGrep, a lot of the code for RipGrep, other than the regex engine, um, was inside of the RipGrep core. Like you couldn't reuse it as a library or something like that. If you wanted to reuse the code inside of RipGrep, you had to copy and paste it somewhere. Um, a lot of people or some subset of people uh, wanted to use RipGrep as a library. And I thought it would be kind of cool because then I could use it in other places too. Um, so I broke the rip grep internals, most of its internals, um, into a bunch of different crates. Like there's a crate for printing, and then there's a crate for actually doing the searching. There's a crate that abstracts over the matcher. So that's where like the regex engine comes into play because rip grep has PCRE2 support and the Rust regex crate support, um, among, among some other crates that are involved there. And uh, I, th I knew going in that it would be a pain, but I don't. I think I was surprised by how much of a pain it is um, to have a bunch of semver boundaries between things inside of your tool. Um, so, like, if I want to make a change that has uh, some sort of interaction between the searching code and the printing code, like, there's a semver boundary there. So, I have to manage an API evolution on one side and an API evolution on the other side because all those things are published to Crates IO, and. Uh, I find that to be very painful and many days I'm very grumpy about it and regret ever having published those crates. Um, but there are a fair number of people using them. So it's nice in that sense, but I've been surprised by the amount of pain that comes from it. So what libraries I created because of rip grep. Um, so regex, predates rip grep, Wachter predates rip grep. Um, but there are a number of libraries that I created because of rip grep. So one of them is ignore. Um, that one's basically like Wachter, but with uh, multi-threading support and uh, git ignore support. Um, that's kind of the thing that like drives rip grep and how it finds files. Um, term color is another crate that I built that um, on Unix kind of does a very simple, dumb thing, which is uh, gives you a nice abstraction for ANSI coloring. There are all the RIP grep internal crates, like the grep printer, grep searcher, and whatnot. Not as many people are using that, but um, some are. And then Globset, which is a globbing library that uh, lets you compile a bunch of globs into one matching object. So you can imagine like a git ignore file has, you know, I think MySQL's repository had like 3000 patterns in its git ignore file. So Globset will actually just take all of those and, and smoosh them down into one finite state machine. I know some people took some of the uh, internal libraries for regex uh, called regex automata and they it lets you build a DFA for a regex pattern and they took that DFA and then they converted it into um, a directory hierarchy. So basically put all the transitions from a deterministic finite state machine into the directory hierarchy so that the match routine is basically just does this file path exist? Um, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, in terms of like 
the stuff that I'm like, um, you know, that, that has, that's really cool, I think. But in terms of like stuff that's in production, um, I know I'm really proud of the fact that VS Code uses RipGrip uh, to do its find and files feature, which I already mentioned. Um, Discord uses the regex crate for its filtering, uh, filtering regexes. Um, and uses it, I think, precisely because it it, pro it provides a linear time guarantee, so it doesn't regex rate doesn't have look around or or back references or that sort of thing. Um, and I believe I don't know the extent of it, but I believe GitHub is using some of my regex and Aho Corosec and Memchar libraries for their it's some it's some component in their code search, a, a very small component, um, which I'm very proud of. And I know folks like Tantivi, which is a information retrieval search engine that's written in Rust. They use, um, I don't think they use FST directly, but they use a fork of it. Um, FST is a crate that's a finite state transducer, and it basically lets you store um, large sets of strings in a very compact space by using a finite state machine. So that's another thing I'm really proud of. Um, aside from GitHub sponsors and thanks.dev, I think that's where Canonical uh, gives money to is thanks.dev. Other than those two things, no, I don't have any, any sort of sponsorship. There are several bugs open on the RipGrep issue tracker about not getting the gitignore semantics exactly correct. Um, and those have been very difficult to fix. The ignore create in particular is not my proudest accomplishment. Um, it's very hard to go in there and fix things and change things. Um, and I really like to redo it, but finding the motivation uh, and the time to go and rebuild it or rethink it from first principles has been very has been a very uh, difficult challenge for me. I think part of it is definitely the sheer number of people uh, using it. Um, kind of just like inspires me to keep, keep it maintained. I don't do a ton of work on it um, other than like keeping maintenance up and maybe adding a small feature here and there or fixing critical bugs. Um, but there's still a lot of improvement to be done and I use it myself every day, um, all the time. And so like whenever I run into paper cuts or things like that, I try to fix those things or make them better. So I'd say it's a combination of just the number of people using it is motivation for me to continue building it, continue to maintaining it and just making it like the best tool for, for myself to use as well. So if you're using RipGrep daily, then you probably already know that it ignores things by default. Um, if you're not using it daily and you're new to RipGrep, that might trip you up. Um, <laughs> I try to uh, make sure that's very prominent in the documentation, but that's definitely something that that is a, is a uh, source of friction for new users. If you're using RipGrep daily, um, I guess I would want you to know two things. One is that RipGrep has discussions on GitHub enabled, and I love questions, like any kind of question, like how does this work or how do I do this or whatever. And the second thing I want you to know is um, the U flag. So dash U, it can be repeated. So one dash U is, uh, causes RipGrep to not respect Git ignore. And so it will search lots of stuff um, that would normally be ignored by Git ignore. Two dash U's will search hidden files and directories, and three dash U's will search binary files. So if you want rip grep to, to be like grep dash R, then you just do RG dash U U U. It's lesser known now, but I hope it will be more well known in the future. Is uh, is my daytime library called GIF. Um, J I F F <laughs> and uh, uh, it's a daytime library for Rust that's inspired heavily by um, Temporal, which is a new um, 
TC39 proposal to add it to JavaScript. Um, and it basically it's, it's, uh, it's tagline is, you know, encouraging you to jump in the pit of success, uh, when using daytime. So it handles time zones. It lets you do calendar arithmetic, um, in a single step with regular hour, minute, second arithmetic, and it handles daylight saving time, transition gaps automatically. It lets you round calendar spans and these sorts of, and, and that also handles time zones as well. Um, and does a whole bunch of stuff um, that hopefully makes it harder to have uh, difficult to diagnose bugs in your daytime handling code. It's awesome that you're using RipGrep. And uh, uh, if you ever have questions, please come and post on the discussion board and I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you.